Hello, fellow Missouri River detectives, and welcome back to a new investigation brought to you by Missouri River Relief. Today, we're exploring why the Missouri River looks like chocolate milk. Have you ever seen a steep river bank or a sandy beach? That is erosion and its competitor deposition in action. Let's find out more about them today. Take a look at the waters on the Missouri River. It looks almost green in this photo due to the reflection of the trees along the bank. If you were looking straight down at the water, it would appear to be a dark, murky brown. Have you ever heard anyone call the Missouri River the Big Muddy? It comes by its name honestly. Some people even say it looks like chocolate milk. Now the reason for its appearance is that the Missouri River has a large amount of sand and dirt all mixed up inside it like cocoa powder in milk. Here we can see some jars of Missouri River water and a picture of chocolate milk. If you filter out the dirt, many Missourians still use the river for drinking water to this very day. The Missouri River is also used for fun and transportation of goods. Think of it kind of like a water highway where boats travel up and downstream. Today the Missouri River looks big but can you imagine that it used to be a whole lot bigger? This is an artist's interpretation of what the Missouri River used to look like hundreds of years ago. What do you notice? I notice how the river spread out and snaked around islands and hills. The river is also a lot wider, and even though you can't see this, scientists say that it used to be a whole lot shallower too. In fact, it was so shallow in places that steamboats, like the one pictured here, would crash and sink. It was so difficult to navigate that hundreds of steamboats sank into its waters. One moment, they'd be traveling along, and then the next they'd be caught on a snag or a submerged tree. Most people could swim to shore, but the items on board would be lost. But what does this have to do with the Missouri River looking like chocolate milk? Well, good question. We're going to explore how erosion is involved with the Missouri River's appearance. Weathering is the process of wearing or breaking down soil, rocks, and other sediments into smaller pieces. An example of this on the Missouri River would be water smoothing sharp rocks along the riverbank as they tumble in the flowing water. Other examples of weathering include rocks on hiking trails being worn down due to foot traffic, or rocks breaking from stress. Erosion is the movement of these smaller pieces to new locations. Erosion happens with agents such as water, wind, or gravity. Erosion is different from weathering because it involves the movement of the weathered materials from one place to another. Along the Missouri River, soil is often eroded from nearby agricultural fields that end up in the waters of the Missouri River and rocks tumble from the face of the bluffs. A common example of erosion would be riverbank erosion, where the flow of the water breaks soil from the bank and carries it downstream. This riverbank erosion can create soil deposits downstream. Scientists call this deposition, which is the buildup of soil or sand that could eventually form into dry land. On the Missouri River, soil builds up along the edge of a bank or forms an island around a sunken tree where the water is forced to slow down. Slower water flow means that the water can no longer carry heavier bits of soil, so the soil gets dropped off or deposited. If we go down to the river and think about how these natural processes fit together, we might notice that some rocks get weathered up on the bank. Rocks might be broken down into smaller pieces or even into soil. Eventually, the soil could get swept away in the river's current and erode downstream. The eroded sandy soil could either end up deposited on the shore of an island where the water flow is slow or swept further downstream. In nature, this pattern of erosion and deposition often creates what scientists call meandering rivers. A meandering river 
looks like a massive snake from above, curving back and forth continuously. Once it bumps against the bank, the channel bounces off and crosses over to the other side of the river. Here you can see how it snakes from side to side. The channel gradually erodes these curves over a long period of time, carrying away soil. What do you notice about the sandy deposits in this picture? This deposited sand and soil is from the banks upstream. It piles up in the slow moving water. When the curves become extreme enough, they can form what is known as an oxbow lake. Wow, take a look at that. This oxbow lake is in mid formation. But what about the Missouri River, you say? Hey, I hear you. Why aren't there any cool oxbow lakes nearby? Well, the Missouri River isn't just any old river. To be good detectives, we have to take a look at the timeline. Think back to the picture I showed you earlier, the painting. Does anything look familiar? To me, it looks like there's a lot of meandering going on there. So why doesn't the river look like this now? What happened to all those snaky curves in the islands? It's all due to a process we call channelization. Channelization involves the construction of wing dikes and levees along the banks of a river in order to control its flow. These are man-made structures and were built with large pieces of wood that had to be driven deep into the ground. They were placed into the river by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the 1930s. The Missouri River was dangerous for transportation and channelization could make it easier for steamboats to travel up and down with less fear of sinking. Let's take a look at some photos over time from a place called Indian Cave Bend. This is a photo from 1934, before they started construction. Here we can see the wing dikes after they were placed in by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. This is after some time has passed. The faster part of the river called the channel, is clearly visible now. Now even more time has passed. What do you notice at the wing dikes? Land is being built up along the wing dikes. The wing dikes slow the flow of water and cause deposition to occur. After a decade, trees started to grow on the newly deposited land, and by 1977, the forests have been cut down and turned into farmland. Can you see any of the wing dikes or levees? That's right. When the water level is low, you can see the ends of them sticking out to this very day. Channelization causes the Missouri River to form a narrower and deeper channel where water can quickly flow through. The river travels in a more condensed path, which lessens the possibility of flooding in nearby towns as well as making it much easier for boats to navigate. This also means that the river has become less meandering, resulting in less islands and consequently less habitat for native animals like the pallid sturgeon to reproduce safely and raise their young. Recently, scientists have been working to help fix this problem by creating places along the Missouri River that resemble the old habitat. Here's a map of the Big Muddy National Fish and Wildlife Refuge, which is located just outside of Columbia. Here, two specially designed habitats are located. You can also see on the map the difference in size of the river between 1893 and 2013. The green outline represents the old river, and the blue outline represents the Missouri River after channelization. The red lines represent the North Overton Chute and the Tadpole Island Chute. The water in these chutes flows much slower than in the main channel, making it easier for small fish to survive. Fish like the pallid sturgeon are not the only species of animal helped by these chutes. The protected beaches and slower waters are also important for endangered species of birds, like the interior least tern, and the piping plover. 
Without these protections, many of these species would go extinct. Now that we have investigated and understand the processes of weathering, erosion, and deposition, do you think that you could point them out the next time you observe them in action? Could you explain to someone why the Missouri River looks like chocolate milk? Or how it became known as the Big Muddy? What helped you learn about how rivers can change over time? Thank you all for joining Missouri River Relief on this investigation into the processes that shaped the Missouri River. See you on the river.